You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Myers-Briggs Question Corner, where we answer your personality-related questions so you can be better engaged at work and at home. I'm Edith Richards, Myers-Briggs Master Practitioner and founder of A Top Career, where we help professionals like you locate and sustain meaningful employment. Before I get started on today's topic, I want to give a shout out to my producer, David, who, if you're a regular subscriber, know is the other voice you hear on these podcasts, that sexy Scottish voice behind the scenes there. And he's been dealing with some health challenges, and I really wanted him to join me for this week's episode, and I hope he'll be able to next week. My favorite episodes are the ones where he and I are talking, and I really miss him a lot, so I hope you'll join me in wishing David a speedy recovery. So in this weekly podcast, I've been talking a lot recently about the COVID-19 pandemic and how it's affected us in different aspects of our personal and professional lives. A few weeks back, I did a podcast specifically on unemployment in these difficult times. Having been a career counselor for nearly 20 years, I can state emphatically that this year and the next and the next are going to be really challenging financially. And how that's going to show up is, unfortunately, with furloughs and business closures and high unemployment numbers. We need to be flexible. We need to be agile and we need to be resilient. And that means practicing a set of skills that you might not be used to and doing things that you don't normally do. The people who are able to do this are the people who are going to succeed. And that brings me to today's topic, using your personality effectively in your job search. Now, if you're actively job searching, there's a lot of stuff that you have to pay attention to. Your resume, including the right keywords in your resume so that it gets through the applicant tracking systems. Your social media presence, networking, and communicating effectively in interviews, and a whole lot more. If we're looking at the entire job search process from beginning to end, thinking about all these different tasks that you're going to need to do in order to get hired for the position you want, there are going to be some things that will come much easier for you than others and some tasks that you'll find more enjoyable than others. For example, in my previous episodes, I have made no secret of the fact that I'm an extroverted type. And if you're tuning in and you're a fan of Clifton Strengths, or you know a bit about this assessment, I have a strength called Woo, and it stands for winning others over. And people who have this are often skilled at breaking the ice in networking situations, meeting new people. And somehow I intuitively know how to connect with each individual person I meet, how to motivate them, and what I need to say in each social interaction. So networking events, which a lot of people have complained about, aren't really too difficult for me. And the better ones can even be invigorating. Now, it's a different story with keeping track of information, like which jobs I've applied for making lists of people I need to contact or things I need to do, developing Excel spreadsheets. And this is a bit embarrassing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, Since I'm a certified professional resume writer, I hate writing resumes. Now, obviously, I've got to get over myself and do these things that don't come naturally to me because otherwise I wouldn't be successful. But what I'm advocating here is to learn more about your personality so you can use it for you rather than against you. In other words, you want to find the tasks where you naturally excel and put more of your effort into those things. Now, that doesn't mean neglecting the other things. It just means focusing your efforts where you are the most successful. Let's look at this another way. I have this friend named Scott, who is incredibly conscientious and detail-oriented, and he's a copywriter and a fact checker with a government agency publication. Scott has always been very diligent. He's never late. He's very responsible, and he will do whatever you ask him to do. And that's made him very effective at his job. 
So Scott has this coworker named Christine. Christine works for the same publication, but she's more on the PR side. She's in charge of communicating with the national and regional offices. She has to work with a lot of different people at a lot of different organizational levels, and she serves as the spokesperson for their team. She is very outspoken and passionate and very direct, and she thrives when she's able to cultivate relationships with people and to motivate her team. Now imagine if Scott and Christine's jobs were switched and Scott was told he'd have to be the PR person and Christine was told she'd have to be the behind the scenes fact checker and editor. I'm pretty sure that they'd perform less well just due to their personalities alone. So if you're at the stage where you're just embarking on your career path or you're in the midst of a career change and you're trying to decide what path to follow. Yes, you do need to pay attention to factors like what industries are hiring and whether there'll be a lot of job openings. You do need to have an up-to-date resume that's optimized for applicant tracking systems. And at some point, you're going to have to demonstrate your skills in an interview and convince the hiring managers to take a chance on you. But Don't neglect how your personality factors into all of this. I'm willing to bet that based solely on your personality with all the jobs that are out there, there are going to be some that you'd be happier in and as a result, more successful than others. Now, obviously in today's world, especially, you may not be able to land your dream job just because of the way the economic situation is it's very likely that it's going to take you longer to find a job in today's world. And there are all sorts of statistics out there on websites like the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Jobvite, Gallup, LinkedIn, and more. But there are a lot of factors that influence these numbers. What I can tell you in my work of helping people find meaningful employment, no matter what their background or industry, the successful people are the ones who find a way to stand out from the crowd and make a real impression with potential employers. And all of the successful job seekers I've worked with have had one very important thing in common. They've found out what works for them and they use it to their advantage. And this is why I don't believe in a prescriptive job search approach, because what's going to work for me isn't necessarily going to work for others. And the person I'm thinking of here is my colleague and my friend, career development expert, Bob McIntosh, who has a great website out there called Things Career Related. And if you're on LinkedIn, you've no doubt seen Bob all over the place out there. He has a huge following. He posts daily and he posts useful, relevant content for job seekers. And he teaches others how to effectively use LinkedIn to their advantage. I'm a bit in awe of Bob. And at the same time, I know that his approach isn't going to work for me because I'm just not that consistent. And I just can't take that much of LinkedIn. But that's my personality and that's okay. And I get asked this question a lot can I change my personality or how can I change my personality? And I have a few podcast episodes out there on this topic. And really folks, I get it. If you're shy or you're a more introverted type, society doesn't often favor those qualities. And it's quite common to wish that you were more outgoing, for example. My stance on this is that it's going to be really difficult to change the core of who you are. But behaviorally, Yes, there are absolutely ways you can change your behavior. But before you go down that road, you want to ask yourself, what are you really trying to accomplish here? If you're a square peg who's trying to fit into a round hole, if you're trying to be someone you're not, at some point, it's going to catch up to you. My opinion is that you're going to get a lot further if you can tap into who you are most naturally and comfortably and spend most of your time in that space. Research from the late, great Otto Kroger, who was a pioneer in the field of psychological type and the Myers-Briggs type indicator, indicates that people who spend 51% or more of their time on activities that support their Myers-Briggs preferences, are happier, more engaged, and more likely to be successful professionally and personally. 
So folks, wrapping up this week's episode, COVID-19 has wrecked havoc on the job search on so many levels, and we're going to see the repercussions of this for years to come. But don't stop what you're doing now that's getting you the results that you want. If you're job searching, in addition to paying attention to all the job search advice out there, and in addition to thinking about the work that you're passionate about, don't neglect factoring your personality into the process. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this episode, please do us a favor and give us a share and follow us on your favorite podcast platform so that you don't miss another episode. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you again next week for another episode of Myers-Briggs Question Corner. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time, MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.